Hey everybody, this is Paul. In this video I'm going to be explaining how to multiply two numbers together when we're dealing with modular arithmetic. So here I've got 8 times 11 in mod 3 is congruent to 1. So the way we get this solution is by using this formula right here where you take the original number, in this case the original number is 8 times 11 or 88, and then we place the mod number here, in our case that would be 3 here, and then we just fill in the Q and R as needed to make this a true statement. And when this is a true statement then we can say that this number n over here, or in our case it will be 8 times 11, we can say that that's congruent to the remainder. So let's go ahead and do that and I'll show you a couple different ways that we can go ahead and do this. So let's just go ahead and multiply 8 times 11 and that gives us the value 88. So we'll go ahead and write 88 down and we're just going to use this equation here and fill in Q and R as needed to make this a true statement. So we have 88 is equal to some number Q times our mod which is 3 plus some remainder. So since 88 is a positive number we want to pick a Q so that Q times 3 is the biggest number possible without being bigger than 88. So it turns out that 29 times 3 will give us the value 87, which is the biggest integer we can choose for Q and still have that value less than 88. So let's go ahead and write 29 down here. So 88 is equal to 29 times 3 plus some remainder. So 29 times 3 is 87. So then 87 plus 1 is equal to 88. And so the reason why I'm calling this one or remainder here is because if we think about this, we take the number 88 and we divide it by our mod. So 88 divided by 3 is equal to 29 plus the remainder of 1. So now we've got it in this form of n is equal to qm plus r. And once we get it there, we can just say that n, the number we started with, is congruent to our remainder when we're dealing with that mod. So in our case, 88 is congruent to 1 when we're dealing with mod 3, which is what we have right here. So that's one way to solve this problem. Let's go ahead and look at another way. So let's look at this 8 right here, and we'll go ahead and write it like this. We'll go ahead and put it in some brackets here, and the brackets are just a grouping mechanism. Putting this in brackets won't change its value at all. And so let's write this as 8 mod 3, and then we'll close the brackets here. And then that's multiplied by the 11. So we'll put the 11 in brackets as well, and we'll write 11 as 11 mod 3. So for this example, what I want to do is I want to show you that you can first convert 8 and also convert 11 and then take the results from each of those, multiply those results together, and you'll still find the solution that you're looking for. If we want to find 8 mod 3, we'll just plug it into this equation here. So our n is the number we're starting with. We're starting with 8. We want to know what 8 is congruent to in mod 3. So our n is 8, and then that is equal to some q value multiplied by m, and m is our mod, so that's 3, plus some remainder. So we want to pick the largest value of q, so that q times 3 is as big as possible, but less than 8. So we're going to pick a q value of 2, since 2 times 3 is 6, and that's the biggest q we can use to make q times 3 still less than 8. So we have 8 is equal to 6, and then we'll have a remainder of 2. So now we've written this in this n is equal to qm plus r form again. So that tells us that 8 is congruent to the remainder. We can rewrite 8 now as the value 2. So I'll just put a 2 here. Now let's do the same thing for 11 mod 3. So plugging this into n is equal to qm plus r. n is what we're starting with, that's the 11. And n is equal to some q multiplied by our mod of 3 plus some remainder. Once again, since 11 is a positive value, we want to pick the q so that q times 3 is as big as possible without being bigger than 11. So the q we want to pick is the value 3, which will give us a 3 times 3 or a 9 and then 9 plus 2 is equal to 11. So now we have this in the n is equal to q m plus r form and so now that we've created a true statement here we can say that 11 is congruent to our remainder of 2 when we're dealing with mod 3. So for 11 we can just replace 11 with 2 as well. So here we found that 8 is congruent to 2 mod 3, and we also found that 11 is congruent to 2 mod 3. So we've simplified this a little bit, so instead of 8 times 11, we can now write 2 times 2 mod 3. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll just go ahead and move these over to the other side of the screen here. So now we have this new problem, 
2 times 2 mod 3. So now what we can do is we can say 2 times 2 is equal to 4. And so now we're looking at 4 mod 3. And then once again, we can just simply plug this into our n is equal to qm plus r. So n is the number we're starting with. We're starting with the value 4. And that's equal to q times m. And m is our mod which is three, and that's plus some remainder. So once again, we want to find the Q so that Q times three is as big as possible, but less than four. So in this case, Q is going to be one. One times three is three, and then we add a remainder of one. And so this shows us here that four is congruent to one mod three. So we'll go ahead and write that down. Four is congruent to one mod three. So what I illustrated here is I just wanted to show you that there's more than one way to do this. We could have either just said, okay, eight times 11 is 88. I'm gonna plug that into this equation. And then from that, I can see that 88 is congruent to the remainder of one mod three. The other thing we could do is we could say, 8 times 11 mod 3 is the same thing as 8 mod 3 times 11 mod 3. And then we can figure out what 8 is congruent to in mod 3 by plugging it into this equation here. And we can do the same thing with 11. So that gives us the new equation of 2 times 2 or 4 mod 3. We can plug 4 into this equation and we can find that 4 is congruent to 1 mod 3. And by finding this relationship, we can say, okay, well, 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2. And 2 times 2, when we're dealing with mod 3 is the same thing as 8 times 11 and that's the value we started with so therefore 8 times 11 we can follow that all the way down this chain and we find that that's the same thing as 1 mod 3 so therefore we have this relationship now we have our original question which was 8 times 11 and we find the 8 times 11 is congruent to two times two when we're dealing with mod three. So we'll write is congruent to two times two. So we've got two times two, two times two is four, and we found that four is congruent to one mod three. So following this down here, we get two times two is congruent to one mod three. So now we have this relationship, eight times 11 is congruent to two times two mod three, and two times two is congruent to one mod three. So therefore we have eight times 11 is congruent to one when we're dealing with mod three. So now you have a couple different options of how you can go about multiplying numbers in modular arithmetic. You can either find the solution right from the beginning, or you can reduce each part of the multiplication and find the solution by a congruent relationship. So thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. If you have any suggestions of topics you'd like me to cover, let me know. I'm open to suggestions right now. You guys have an excellent day, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.